Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and thank you for joining us today on this very special Youth Sunday service. I am Pastor Jeff Keller, and joining me today is Rachel Johnson. We are so excited for everything that we have planned for you today. We are excited for all of the hard work that our youth have put into making this into a special service for you and for sharing all of their gifts and talents with us. We just hope that as you join us, wherever you may be, that throughout the service you will be joining us in prayer, that you will be joining us in the excitement of worship, and that you may find yourself in this season, this, this sort of unusual season when we're not physically present, just in lifted and encouraged in, in the love of Jesus Christ. And so now we just welcome you to begin worship with us as Hannah Wood leads us in a call to worship. Lord, please guide us through our darkest times. Through my fear, I trust in God. Lord, lead us to a better and brighter future. Through my fear, I trust in God. Lord, please help those in difficult situations. Through my fear, I trust in God. Throughout this season, we have been engaging you every Sunday morning in a morning psalm. And so we have a morning psalm for you again today. The uh, beginning portion of the psalm is actually the theme for Youth Sunday, Through My Fear, I Trust in God. And it says, Be merciful to me, O God, for men hotly pursue me. All day long they press their attack. My slanderers pursue me all day long. Many are attacking me in their pride. When I am afraid... I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust. I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? All day long they twist my words. They are always plotting to harm me. They conspire, they lurk, they watch my steps, eager to take my life. On no account let them escape. In your anger, O God, bring down the nations. Record my lament. List my tears on your scroll. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will turn back when I call for help. By this I will know that God is for me, in God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? I am under vows to you, O God. I will present my thank offerings to you, for you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Amen. Hi, my name is Ethan Malott. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Casadani, and I will be doing the children's story for you Sunday. Uh, here we go. Uh, start with this little scripture here. It says, Through my fear, I trust God. Um, in Psalm 56, verses 1 through 4. Uh, I just want to say this children's story is by Rachel Johnson, so thank you for that. Um, have any of you ever been lost? 
maybe you couldn't find your parents in the grocery store? I have a story for you from the Bible where an animal was lost. Does anyone know of any stories in the Bible where there is a lost animal? Today, we are going to talk about a lost sheep in the Bible. There was a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. Can you imagine having to keep track of 100 sheep? And what about taking care of the sheep? That would be a huge responsibility. One day, the shepherd goes to count his sheep and only has 99. One of the sheep was lost. The shepherd could not find one of his sheep. Does anyone know what the shepherd did? The shepherd went to look for that sheep. He left the other 99 sheep behind. How many of you would leave 99 things you have to go looking for one missing one? If you lost a toy, but all these other toys are still with you, would you go hunting for that one toy? If sheep had feelings, that what might the sheep have, done, have been feeling when it was lost? The sheep might have been scared and afraid. It was lost and had no idea where to go. Maybe you have felt this way when you weren't able to find your parents. It's scary when you don't know where you are. So the shepherd left the 99 sheep to go looking for the one lost sheep. God is like this shepherd because God will look for one lost person rather than stay with all the found people. God will come looking for us and come help us if we are lost and afraid. God cares so much about all of us and is always going to be there for us to lean on. God never wants us to feel lost or afraid. God will help us and come looking for us when we are lost, but we will have to be willing to accept help. Doesn't that sound like an awesome thing that God is always there for us? I think it does. Will you pray with me? God, thank you, for, thank you so much for all these children here today and their willingness to learn more about you. I pray that they will will realize you are always there to help them. Amen. You call me out upon the waters, the great feet may fail and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name and keep eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are mine Your grace abounds in the deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't start now. So I
Oh, Heavenly Father, right now, I do not know what to do. I am scared things will never be the same. Please guide me through my fears, us, and you, especially in my darkest moments. Amen. My name is Daniel Ocker. And I am Joshua Ocker. I have many enemies. I had many enemies. They are in pursuit after me. They used to be in pursuit of me. They are still attack or they are attacking. They used to be attack. They are still attacking. Until one day. They are still attacking. I had enough. They are still attacking. I put my faith in God. They are still attacking. And I realized. They are still attacking. My enemies were only but mere mortals. They are still attacking. God has sudged my fear. They are still attacking. And now I fear nothing. Until one day I put my trust in God. So February 8th, when the National Youth Cabinet met in Elgin, Illinois, in the denominational offices to plan Youth Sunday, we wanted to pick a topic that would relate really well to youth, that youth would get a lot out of, but also something that everybody else in the church could get something out of. And when we picked the topic of fear, we thought that was a good topic that youth could especially relate to, but that everybody else could. And we never thought that three months later, on Youth Sunday, it would fit so well with everything that we're dealing with in the world right now. So, fear is something that we all deal with. In Psalm 56, verse 1, it says, For my enemies are in hot pursuit. Our fears are always trying to get the best of us. They're always pursuing us. They're always there and coming after us. For example, Moses, in Exodus 2 and 3, ran away because he was afraid he could not do what God asked. God asked him to deliver his people, and Moses thought that he couldn't do that, so he fled to Midian. He let his fear, the enemy, get to him. God still found him and helped him by talking to him through the burning bush. Moses wrestled with God. He hid his face. He was afraid. He worried he could not do what God asked him to do. But God told Moses that he would be with him. Moses just had to put his trust in God. So that's what Moses did. Moses put his trust in God, that God would be there to help him. And God was there to help him through it. Through Moses' fear, he trusted in God, and everything turned out okay for Moses. We take Peter in Luke chapter, 20, in Luke chapter 22. Peter's told that he will deny Jesus three times. But Peter doesn't think he will. In Luke chapter 22, verse 33, Peter says, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. 
Peter thinks that he's going to be able to go with Jesus. He's not going to deny Jesus. Whatever Jesus' punishment is, that's what Peter's punishment will be too. But eventually they come to take Jesus away. And Peter follows the guards and Jesus at a distance. He doesn't want to be recognized as someone that follows Jesus. Three different people recognize Peter, though, and ask if he's with Jesus. Every time, Peter answers no. And then Peter realizes that he did deny Jesus three times, that Jesus said he was going to, and then he did. Peter let his fear the enemy get to him. He let his fear of being recognized as a follower of Jesus and the punishment that he might endure, he let that get to him. Peter remembers what Jesus said, and he feels ashamed. So we fast forward to after Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is talking to the disciples, and in Luke 24, verse 47, Jesus says, Repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Jesus is talking to all of his disciples, including Peter. And he says that he will forgive all sins, including the sin where Peter denied knowing Jesus. Through Peter's fear of getting recognized as a follower of Jesus and that Jesus wouldn't forgive him for his sins, he trusted in God and he was forgiven. Just like in Psalm 56 verse 3, it says, When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. Moses did that. Moses was afraid that he couldn't deliver his people, but he trusted that God would help him. In Psalm 56, 4, it says, In God whose word I praise, in God I trust and am not afraid. Moses and Peter were both afraid before they fully trusted that God would be there to help them. Moses was afraid he couldn't deliver his people, but once he let God help him, he was able to deliver his people. Peter was afraid of being recognized as a follower of Jesus, but once he realized that it was okay to be recognized as a follower of Jesus, he trusted in God. Both Moses and Peter realized with God's help, they would be forgiven for not believing that things would be alright and for running when things got hard. This is the exact same thing that happens to us. We let our fears get the best of us before we fully put our trust in God. After Moses and Peter fully put their trust in God, things worked out and they were able to do what God wanted them to do. Moses was able to deliver his people, and Peter could deliver the gospel to others. In the Bible, even when commands that God had given were broken, God himself was still there. Adam and Eve in Genesis 2 and 3, they were naked but they felt no shame at first. And then they broke the command that God had given them. They ate the fruit from the tree that God told them not to eat from. They were suddenly aware that they had no clothes, so they made clothes for themselves. And then they heard God, and they were scared that he would be upset with them, so they ran and hid from him. They let their fear, the enemy, get the best of them. God ended up being upset with Adam and Eve. He cursed all the animals and the humans. But he also helped them. He made clothes for them that were better than the clothes that they had made for him themselves. And he banned them from the garden so they couldn't eat from the fruit anymore. Even though they disobeyed God, God still helped them and he allowed them to be forgiven. Through Adam and Eve's fear of disobeying God, they still trusted in God and God helped them. We're human. We're most definitely going to mess up and run away from our fear like Moses and Peter did. We're most definitely going to break a command God has given us, like Adam and Eve. But God will always be there to help us through our fears, even when we run away from them. He will always be there for us when we disobey. We just have to trust in God and ask Him for help when we need it. We all deal with different fears. Personally, I have a fear of security in an airport. Coming home from National Youth Conference two years ago, I was going through security and my bag got pulled. And they had to search through my bag because I had too many decks of cards in there that they couldn't see through. And coming from home from National Youth Cabinet the first time, I got my bag pulled again because I forgot to empty my water bottle. Both of those situations 
made me start to fear going through security at airports. So coming home from National Youth Cabinet for the second time, I made sure I had everything the way it needed to be, and I made sure that there were no decks of cards in my bag, and I had emptied my water bottle. I thought I had done everything to prevent my bag from getting pulled at security. But as I step through the metal detector and I'm waiting for my bag to come through the scanner, I realize I forgot to take my bag of liquids out of my suitcase. And I don't know why, but they didn't pull my bag and search it. But I'm still afraid of security that something is going to happen. None of those times did anything terrible happen. I still got my bag, and all they did was search through my bag. But each of those times, I let my fear overwhelm me. Coming home from National Youth Conference, they pulled my bag, and the guy's going through it, and he's asking me what my name is, my date of birth, my age, and I can't remember any of those. I couldn't remember that my name was Rachel Johnson. I couldn't remember that at the time I was 16, and I could not remember that my birthday was March 28, 2002. And because of all of those things and going through my bag, I just got super overwhelmed, and I was on the verge of tears in the middle of the airport. But as I look over and I see the rest of the youth group waiting for everybody else to come through security, I see my friends, they're watching me, they're making sure that I'm okay. And then once I got my bag and I went over to them, they were trying to make me laugh and make me feel better. They were trying to show me that it was okay. And once I got myself under control and I was able to laugh and joke with them, I realized that I let my fear overwhelm me. I just needed to take a deep breath and trust that God was going to get me through the situation. I'm not saying that if you trust God through your fears, your bag won't get searched at security and nothing bad will happen to you. But we have to let God help us. We have to allow God into our lives when we run from our fears. And we have to allow God to help us when we break commands and are scared of the fallout. And when we let our fears overwhelm us, we have to let God be there to help us. God's always going to be there when we need him. We just have to ask him for help. So I love visuals, and I have a fear uh, visual lesson for us. So I have some vinegar, some baking soda, and a glass here. This glass represents us. The baking soda here represents our fears. And we all have fears, some of them bigger than others, but we all have fears, and they're inside of us. And the vinegar here represents God. When we allow God into our lives, our fears start to bubble out. And we no longer have some of our fears once we trust in God. And I know some of you will say that there's still baking soda in the bottom of this glass. And yes, there is still baking soda in the bottom of the glass, but there's still vinegar in the glass too. Some of our fears might take longer for us to overcome. Some of our fears, we might just have to learn to trust in God to get us through the fearful situations. But the vinegar still being in there shows us that God is still going to be with us even through the fears that we might not be able to overcome. I'm never going to be able to, I'm always going to go through security and I'm going to be scared. But I'm going to learn to deal with my fear and I'm going to learn to trust God through my fear of going through security. No matter what your fear is, you have to let God help you. Whether you run away from your fear or you break a command and you're scared of the fallout, or you let your fear overwhelm you. You need to ask God into your life and ask him for help. And when you ask him for help, he will be there to help you through your fears. You just have to trust in God, and he will always be there to help you overcome your fears, or he will be there to help you through your fears that are harder to overcome.